I can't take it anymore. I want to see mommy soon. My skinny five-year-old granddaughter pleaded with me with empty eyes. She had been chained up inside the warehouse where I went to sort through my late daughter's belongings. I thought you were missing. And your mom has already passed away. I want to see my daughter too, I felt exactly the same way, and I couldn't stop crying. Hearing my granddaughter repeatedly say she wanted to see her mom, I made a decision. Then, shall we go to the heaven together with grandma? But just as I was about to put my hands around my grandson's neck, I noticed something very familiar. Is that? At that moment, I realized a certain truth, and I vowed to seek revenge. On my daughter's wedding day. I wish you all the happiness. I said joyfully to Alice. My name is Mary, and I'm 58 years old working as a medical secretary at a nearby hospital. If I do say so myself, after my husband passed away early, I worked so hard to raise my daughter Alice and her brother Terry. Mom, thank you always. You must be tired. Let me give you a shoulder massage. She's an attentive daughter like my kind-hearted husband. She always spoke to me like that and it comforted me. Since becoming an adult, Alice has been running an online shop and seems to have quite a lot of savings. My daughter Alice married a wonderful elite businessman Dylan a few years ago and was blessed with an adorable granddaughter Zoe. My son Terry also graduated from university and became independent. I felt relieved and content. However, on a hot summer day, my daughter suddenly came home with Zoe. Her expression was dark, and she didn't look well. What's wrong? You seem down. Did something happen? Well, it might just be my imagination, but lately, I feel like Dylan's attitude towards me has been getting colder. According to my daughter, her husband always comes home late at night and smells of alcohol. In addition, my daughter said that when she tries to talk to him, he ignores her or shouts shut up. At worst, he hits and kicks her. And on top of that, he says since I have my own income, he doesn't need to contribute to our living expenses. He claims he's saving his income, but he won't show me his bank statement. I'm worried. What's going on with Dylan? It must be tough for you. Then she started crying, biting her lips. For my resilient daughter to express such vulnerability, the situation must have been incredibly difficult for her. I gently spoke to her. I understand. How about living apart for a while? If you ever want a divorce, you can always come back. However, my daughter didn't nod in agreement. Thank you. I'll wait and see a little more. Talking to you has made me feel a bit better. Really? Are you sure you're okay? I have Zoe, so I can't make a decision right away. She forced her face into a smile to reassure me, and continued speaking. Besides, Dylan is kind by nature. If I keep trying my best, maybe he'll be kind again. I'll do my best a little more. And so, my daughter left with my granddaughter, looking sad. If only I had listened more attentively that day, perhaps things wouldn't have turned out like that. Afterwards, I would come to deeply regret my actions. One month later, Suddenly, I received a call from Dylan saying that my daughter had passed away. No. That can't be true. How could I believe my own child's gone so suddenly? My son-in-law said Alice took Zoe with her and jumped into a waterfall to end her life. Moreover, there was a note left on the computer, 
almost like a farewell letter, saying, I've lost confidence to keep living. I'm leaving with Zoe. Because of Alice, I lost my precious daughter. What are you going to do about it? Wait, what do you mean? I was bewildered by the shock of my daughter's death and Dylan's intense words. Because of your lack of discipline, she became such a horrible woman that she even dragged our daughter into this. So, it's your fault. My. Fault. Obviously, isn't it? Dylan, looking pained, told me an even more unbelievable thing. Apparently, Alice's body was found, but my granddaughter was nowhere to be found and missing. I don't care about that woman at all, I just want my daughter back. In the end, Dylan, thinking much of the public image, hastily arranged a private funeral and scattered Alice's ashes in the sea. What? Unable to attend my beloved daughter's funeral, I fell into the depths of despair. After that, I couldn't focus on anything, and I took a leave of absence from work. Whether I was asleep or awake, the images of my daughter and granddaughter kept coming to my mind very often, and I couldn't stop crying. It felt like there was an endless source of tears in the human body. One week later, I received a call from my son-in-law. I want to move on quickly, so I'll take care of sorting through Alice's belongings. I'm going to throw away everything that belonged to Alice. Please wait. I interrupted him with great effort. I couldn't see my daughter one last time, but please let me at least take care of sorting through her belongings. Dylan seemed reluctant to agree with my words, but I couldn't back down. Sorting through belongings in just one week is far too soon by any measure. Moreover, considering the concerns my daughter had previously shared with me, I couldn't fully trust Dylan. That's why I wanted to see for myself if there were any clues or evidence to understand the situation better. I couldn't sit still, so I went to my daughter's house the following evening. Since I couldn't reach Dylan, I waited at the front door, but he didn't return even late into the night. I reluctantly called him again, and he immediately exploded in anger. It's so rude of you to show up like this. I'm working late today, so just go home. Besides, I told you I'll take care of Alice's stuff. Don't ever come to my house again. I'm sorry for interrupting you. But Alice gave me a spare key just in case. So, is it not okay if I use it to get in? Ha! Huh. No way. Absolutely not. Unbelievable. You're such an audacious old hag. I'll sue you. I was shocked by his cold words, but Dylan didn't seem to care and continued yelling angrily before abruptly hanging up the phone. I didn't have the courage to enter the house without permission, so reluctantly, I started to leave. However, at that moment, I suddenly noticed a strange odor hitting my nose. It smelled like rotting garbage. What is this smell? I followed the scent to its source and found it coming from the warehouse in the backyard shed. I went to the back of the warehouse, having a bad hunch, and peered through a window. Then I saw something moving. It was dark, making it difficult to see clearly, but it looked almost like a living creature. What is that? I felt a shiver down my spine, but I knew I couldn't just leave it. I tried to open the warehouse door, but the old lock was broken, and something like a makeshift bar was preventing the door from opening from the inside. However, after I shaked the door vigorously a few times, I managed to get it open. And then, cautiously, I entered inside. There, to my utter shock. I found my missing granddaughter chained up. Zoe. 
I rushed over in a panic, and my granddaughter looked up at me with a puzzled expression. Grandma. Around my granddaughter, there were lunch boxes emitting a rotten smell and partially eaten bread scattered. Additionally, there was a bucket containing waste. This is awful. Poor thing. I was more shocked by the situation than relieved by Zoe being alive. And gently, I hugged my little granddaughter. But, she was thin and had vacant eyes. I can't take it anymore. I want to see mommy soon. I couldn't stop crying when I heard that. Grandma, take me to mommy. All right. Shall we go together? As I felt a strong sense of loss from losing my daughter, I placed my hand on my granddaughter's neck, thinking of going to heaven with my granddaughter. At that moment, I noticed a necklace around Zoe's neck. It was a necklace I had given my daughter as a protective charm, and hanging from the necklace was a key that shouldn't have been there. Where did you get this key from? I asked recognizing the key, and my granddaughter explained to me. This is. After hearing what my granddaughter said, I felt a surge of anger that made my blood boil. So that's what happened. I'll never forgive this. I found a pair of pliers in the shed and managed to cut the chains. Then I took my granddaughter and headed to some place. Then I resolved to seek revenge in place of my daughter. The next day, my son-in-law stormed into my home. His eyes were bloodshot, his brow furrowed, and his face was bright red, a truly terrifying visage. Hey! You took Zoe, didn't you? She's my daughter. Give her back. Oh. What are you talking about? I called you so many times last night and you didn't answer. You must be the one who took her. With his face turning even redder, my son-in-law continued shouting, seemingly unaware of his own contradictions in what he was saying. But Zoe is missing, isn't she? Then, my son-in-law faltered for a moment in his words and glared at me intensely. After letting her go through such horrible things, how dare you call yourself a father? She's a selfish daughter who wouldn't listen to her parents, so I was just disciplining her. Besides, Alice took her own life because she was troubled by raising Zoe. Dylan listed out how difficult and uncontrollable his own child was. I've never heard such a thing before. Of course, if I told you, you'd just spoil Zoe. That's why I said she was missing. It's my right as a parent to do whatever I want with my child. It's none of your business, old hag. But chaining her up and locking her up like that goes beyond discipline. I'm going to press charges. Then, suddenly, my son-in-law smirked and said, you have no evidence at all, and mocked me. Who's going to believe what that kid says? I have evidence. There should be medical records from the hospital. I showed him the pictures of Zoe from that time, which were saved on my phone. When did you give that to me, you old hag? Dylan lunged at me, trying to snatch my phone away. At that moment, someone came out of the next room and shouted, stop, and grabbed Dylan's arm to stop him. It was my son, Terry. Why are you here? Let go of me. Actually, I had told my son Terry about finding my granddaughter Zoe the day before, and he rushed over to help me. Held down by Terry, who had been trained in wrestling during his school days, Dylan looked pathetic. I know you took Alice's savings, I know you got violent when Alice found out about your affair and injured her. I'm sorry for the confusion. Here's the complete translation. How do you know all that? My son-in-law gave me a puzzled look. 
I heard it from Alice, my daughter. Ha! Huh. Is she alive? I told Dylan, who turned pale with surprise, about the circumstances when I met my daughter. As it turns out, the necklace my granddaughter was wearing had the key to my childhood home. Though it's now an empty house, I kept it as a memento. And at that moment, my granddaughter pleaded. Mom said this necklace is her charm. Mom is hurt. Please help her. Upon hearing that, I found a ray of hope that my daughter might still be alive. I rescued my granddaughter and headed straight to my childhood home, which had become vacant, and I found Alice lying unconscious. Stay with me, Alice. I lifted her up. Mom. I heard her murmuring faintly. Mom. I missed you. Zoe also hugged her. I quickly called an ambulance, and my daughter was rushed to the hospital and she survived. According to the doctor, if we had been a little later, she might not have made it. Since Zoe was also in poor nutritional condition, she ended up being hospitalized along with her mother. Thus, I felt overwhelming joy from the bottom of my heart at my daughter's safe return, whom I had thought I might never see again. However, simultaneously, I felt my entire body burned with anger towards the person who had caused such suffering to my daughter and granddaughter. Afterwards, I heard the whole story from my daughter, who regained consciousness in the hospital, about how everything had happened. While cleaning, Alice found the evidence that Dylan had been cheating on her and used up her savings on his computer, and then she confronted him about it. She said that he flew into a rage and physically assaulted her, hitting and kicking her, which caused her injuries. In severe pain from being kicked in the stomach and feeling faint, Alice begged Dylan for help. However, he just laughed and walked away to the bedroom. She felt unsafe to stay at home any longer, so she decided to run away with Zoe who helped her up. Although they managed to escape from the house, Alice realized that Dylan had taken her bank book, wallet and phone. They stumbled along for about an hour and arrived at my childhood home. And my granddaughter Zoe, trying to help her mother, went home to get Alice's phone and wallet while she was sleeping, and she was caught by her father there. Despite being chained up, Zoe refused to tell Alice's whereabouts no matter how many times she was asked. Alice and Zoe almost lost their lives. Well, Alice was pale and barely breathing. Even if they escaped, it was only a matter of time. Dylan said it lightly. Zoe wouldn't talk, and after that, there was no contact from anyone about her, so I just assumed she died somewhere out of sight. Thinking his wife was dead, Dylan wrote a suicide note on the computer, making it look like Alice had taken her own life. Furthermore, he made it appear that Zoe was missing, locked her in a warehouse, and hoped she would eventually die there. Horrible. It's just a marital spat. The affair was just a fling. Now, Alice is alive, aren't you not happy? That's not that point. I've been recording this conversation. I'm reporting this to the police. Upon hearing the word police, Dylan suddenly panicked and began begging for forgiveness, kneeling down. It's just bewildering how suddenly he changed his attitude like that. I'm sorry. I'll break up with my affair partner and I'll be kind to Alice from now on. Please don't involve the police. I can't believe what you say. When I refused, he tried to cling to my arm. If I get caught, Zoe will be fatherless. Is that what you want? With tears in his eyes, Dylan desperately pleaded for mercy, but I pushed his hand away. She'd be better off without a father like you. But... 
At that moment, the police, called by my son, arrived, and Dylan was taken away in custody. After that, my daughter divorced him. Dylan received a prison sentence and ended up behind bars. Being convicted also led to him losing his job at the company. Alice demanded $100,000 which is the same amount of her savings from her single life and used up by Dylan, $20,000 in compensation for the affair and injuries caused, and $15,000 in child support. And she also demanded $10,000 in compensation from Dylan's affair partner, who was a junior colleague at the company. It seems Dylan intended to quickly throw away Alice's belongings and move in with his affair partner, but the affair partner wasn't serious about him. Dylan's parents learned of his actions, apologized to my daughter, and sold their land to pay compensation. However, they intended for Dylan to work and repay them once he was released from prison. Dylan is likely to face a difficult time even after he gets out of prison. My daughter and granddaughter got better and came back to me. Alice, now fully recovered, has started working and is enjoying a peaceful life. I'm also determined to stay strong and do my best for my daughter and granddaughter. God. What is this? It stinks! Yuck! This is worse than instant food. It tastes like nothing I've ever had before. My mother-in-law and brother-in-law are making a big fuss about how terrible the curry I made tastes. This is like dog food. Let's throw it out right away. With that, my mother-in-law dumps the curry I spent hours cooking into the sink. She disregarded both the ingredients and my feelings. I will definitely get my revenge. They will regret what they did. I'm Nancy, a 29-year-old housewife. I've been married to my husband for a year, and we've been happy without even the smallest argument. My husband's family runs a business but it's his older brother who will take over. So, I thought I wouldn't have to interact with my in-laws more than necessary and felt at ease. But... Hello? Nancy? Oh, mother-in-law. Once again, the worst time of the day begins. My mother-in-law calls me every day around evening. The purpose of her calls is something I find painful. So? What's on the menu for dinner tonight? Ever since I got married, my cooking-savvy mother-in-law has made it a habit to keep track of our dinner menus. She runs a popular cooking blog and insists on checking what her younger son's family is eating as well. I find it quite unnecessary, but since it's my husband's family, I want to maintain a good relationship. So, I answer her calls every day. We're having curry tonight. What? Curry again? You had curry last Friday too. It's my husband's request to have curry every Friday. Really? Having curry every week must be quite the luxury. Is that a tradition from your family, Nancy? I could hear another laugh behind my mother-in-law's snide voice. Hey, Mom! It's not fair to bring up Nancy's family. They probably only know poor man's food since they're just a family of a salaried employee. It seemed my mother-in-law was using her smartphone on speaker mode. The one laughing along with her was my husband's brother. Both my mother-in-law and brother-in-law look down on my family because we are a family of a salaried employee. One is the wife of a company president. And the other is the next president. Even though it feels unfair, I always take a deep breath and hold back. My husband eats it happily. When I defended myself, both my mother-in-law and brother-in-law laughed. 
He's just being polite to you. Exactly. We grew up eating gourmet meals made from top-notch ingredients by mom. There's no way we'd find such common food like curry tasty. I heard a sigh, and then my mother-in-law spoke in a frustrated tone. If you're so confident, I'll judge it myself. I'll come over for lunch at the beginning of the week. Nancy, make your famous curry. I'll come too. The more discerning palates, the better. But what about your work? I can take a day off whenever I want. You wouldn't understand, but as the heir, I have the privilege to do as I please. With that, they hung up, leaving me with their one-sided arrangement. And then, at the beginning of the week. We are here. Nancy. You made the curry, right? Hmm. I can smell it, but it doesn't smell like mom's curry. Not surprising. I led my haughty mother-in-law and brother-in-law into the living room. In the kitchen, the special curry I had been simmering since early morning was filling the air with a delicious aroma. Would you both like rice with your curry? Of course. What else would we have? Um, I also have naan prepared. I had prepared naan the night before, just in case. My brother-in-law snickered at my effort. Come on, everyone knows rice goes best with curry. You really don't know anything about proper meals, do you? No wonder, considering your poor upbringing. Exactly. It's pitiful. My kids would never consider pairing curry with bread. It's not bread. It's naan. Whatever. Just serve the curry already. Oh, such troublesome people. I decided not to mention that my husband usually enjoys my curry with both rice and naan. Well then. Here's the curry. Please enjoy. I placed plates with dome-shaped rice surrounded by curry in front of them. My mother-in-law and brother-in-law grimaced and scrutinized the curry. Isn't the color off? Is it spoiled? The smell is weird too. Is it even edible? It was clear they were ready to complain before even trying it but I was confident they'd like it once they tasted it. I'm proud of my curry-making skills, and my husband loves it so much he says he could eat it every day. Fine. I'll take a picture and post it on my blog. Don't worry, I'll make sure to mention it's made by my daughter-in-law. Sure, I don't mind. Hearing my response, she pulled out her phone and took several pictures. After giving a sly smile, she finally picked up her spoon. Let's see how this commoner's curry tastes. It's actually making me nervous. They continued their snide remarks as they took their first bites. After just a few chews, their faces twisted in disgust. Ugh. What is this? It stinks. Yuck. It's worse than instant food. It has an incomprehensible taste. What? No way. They gulped down the water I had prepared, then dramatically stirred the curry around their plates. What is this stuff? Mom, do you know? No idea. It's awful. My brother-in-law scooped up a chickpea from the curry and stared at it while pinching his nose. My mother-in-law also frowned, looking at it as if it were something alien. It's awful? These are normal ingredients. Lies! I've never seen such coarse beige lumps in my regular supermarket. This is not normal food. Oh, I get it. 
couldn't afford proper ingredients with my brother's salary. Huh? Makes sense. Unlike me, the future president, he's just a regular salaried employee. Hearing them insult not just my curry but also my husband, I felt a surge of anger. Those are chickpeas, and you can find them anywhere. Besides, my husband may be a salaried employee, but he works hard enough to let me buy quality ingredients without any worry. I couldn't stand how my mother-in-law, despite claiming to love cooking, looked down on my husband, who was also their beloved family member. However, my mother-in-law and brother-in-law glared at me with intense displeasure, obviously not happy with being talked back to by the wife of a salaried employee's family. How dare you speak like that, considering you're from a poor family? This awful curry is your fault. Exactly. This strange taste is still numbing my tongue. This isn't fit for human consumption. He slammed his spoon on the table, and my mother-in-law laughed in agreement. Indeed. This is dog food. Nancy, you don't have a dog, right? Let's just throw it away. With that, she grabbed her plate and my brother-in-law's plate and headed to the sink. She dumped all the curry from the two plates into the sink. What are you doing? I spent so much time making that curry. Ignoring my shock, my mother-in-law peered into the curry pot on the stove and grimaced. Ugh, there's so much left. The smell is unbearable. Wow, really? You're not planning to serve this to my brother for dinner, are you? He stormed into the kitchen and glared at me after looking into the pot. I've been simmering the curry since morning, and my husband was excited about having it for dinner when he left for work. Unbelievable! He's just pretending to like this awful stuff to please you. That's why he's just a salaried employee. With that, my brother-in-law grabbed the pot and dumped all the curry into the sink, just as his mother had done. That's terrible. I was speechless. My mother-in-law sighed, covering her nose and mouth with a handkerchief. The whole place reeks. Let's leave. Oh, Nancy, you should clean the drain before it gets clogged. Satisfied with her parting shot, she laughed and walked out. My brother-in-law followed, laughing too, until the front door closed behind them. I can't believe this. I made it because he wanted it. I trembled with shock over the wasted food and anger at their nasty remarks and actions. What a joke, calling herself a good cook. She doesn't even know what chickpeas are. People who waste food aren't true food lovers. I vented my anger while cleaning the mess in the sink. I was tired of being looked down upon for coming from a salaryman family and having my family belittled, especially since it was also targeting my husband. I realized I didn't have to tolerate their behavior just because they were my in-laws. That's right. An idea struck me, making me jump up. I accidentally hit my raised fist on the cupboard, but I didn't even feel the pain. Watch this. The day after my mother-in-law and brother-in-law's visit, my mother-in-law called again to ask about dinner. It amazed me how she could call so brazenly after what happened. However, there was no point in blowing up now. I responded as meekly as possible. Before she could hang up, I cut in with, by the way, I apologize for serving curry that didn't suit your tastes yesterday. I'd like to invite you both to my family home to taste the curry I grew up eating. Oh, so you're reflecting on it. But the curry you grew up eating? How is it different from yesterday's? Are you trying to serve us something awful again? No. My family's curry is much, much better than what I make. Please, bring your oldest son too. 
Please. Perhaps pleased by my desperate plea, my mother-in-law sighed dramatically on the other end. All right then. If you're so insistent, we'll visit your family's home with my eldest son. Great. How about tomorrow? I eagerly confirmed the arrangement and then called my mother. She happily agreed to host my mother-in-law and brother-in-law for a curry meal at her home. Everything was set. Like a child before a field trip, I could hardly contain my excitement. The next day arrived, the day I was to host my mother-in-law and brother-in-law at my family home. Hello. Thank you for going out of your way to invite us today. As the preparations for the curry were completed, my mother-in-law and brother-in-law arrived at our house with their usual condescending smiles. Oh, it's been a while. Thank you for visiting our humble home. My mother was the first to greet them. She has a natural, cheerful demeanor and always smiles. The humble home comment wasn't meant to be sarcastic, it likely slipped out because I'd often complained to her about being labeled as such by my in-laws. Her laid-back attitude as the wife of a salaried employee seemed to irritate my mother-in-law, who had clearly looked down on her since the initial meeting when my husband and I got married. We'll just make ourselves at home. We didn't bring any gifts because we weren't sure what people in such households like. Haha, <laughs> Mom, you're making me laugh. Despite their rude remarks, my mother just smiled warmly. No need for gifts. Luckily, we have plenty of sweets prepared today, along with the curry. Please, come in. She cheerfully led them to the living room. I could see my mother-in-law and brother-in-law were already a bit off balance, and I barely managed to suppress a grin. Here's the curry. Please, help yourselves. I placed the curry in front of my mother-in-law and brother-in-law, who were already smirking, clearly ready to criticize. Hmm, the dishes are quite plain. Oh right, I forgot this is a salaried employee's household. I prefer pure silver spoons, but I suppose I'll make an exception today for this experience of visiting a common household. They made these snide remarks while glancing at me, but my mother just kept smiling. Aren't these dishes great? They were on a half-price sale at the local supermarket for just $3. Can you believe it? I even took a picture and emailed it to my parents. Hearing this, my mother-in-law and brother-in-law shook with fake laughter, whispering to each other. Did you hear that? Three dollars dishes. And sharing such cheap deals with her family. Nancy's mother must be from a poor salaries employee's family too. Pathetic, isn't it? Are these dishes even safe to use? No wonder Nancy's mother doesn't understand the value of things. So sad. They continued to gossip, glancing at me to make sure I heard every word. My anger flared at their insults, but I took a deep breath to calm myself. Oh, I'm sorry. The price of the dishes doesn't matter, does it? Please, enjoy the flavors of our home. Encouraged by my cheerful mother, my mother-in-law and brother-in-law exchanged smug smiles and took a bite of the curry. As soon as they tasted it, they reacted dramatically. This is awful! Spit! Spit! This tastes just like the curry from Nancy's place! I can't eat this! It's inedible! Uh, cough! Cough! Who made this? Nancy? Nancy's mother? Either way, they should get a taste test at the hospital. This is unbearable. If this is what common people's food tastes like, it's terrible. Nancy might be used to it, but I can't trust such a household with the meals for our precious second son. 
Sorry. Even though you went through the trouble of making it, we can't eat it. The smell alone is unbearable. We told Nancy beforehand that we don't like common people's food, but she insisted we come. Please, take it away. My mother watched the two of them in shock, unable to say anything. I was at a loss for words. Before I could say anything, my mother tilted her head with a disappointed expression and said, Oh dear. It seems it didn't suit your taste. I apologize. I'm sorry for serving something like this. Chef, could you please take the curry away? Certainly. At the sound of my mother's voice and the chef's response, my mother-in-law and brother-in-law widened their eyes in surprise. When they saw who entered the living room from the kitchen, they were stunned, their mouths and eyes gaping. I had hoped to impress you with a dish that had been refined from the one served at the hotel. It's disappointing that it didn't meet your expectations. The man standing in the living room, dressed in a pristine white chef's uniform without a chef's hat, was clearly a professional cook. Wait! I recognize this person! He's the executive chef from a top hotel, right? He's collaborated with various companies. He's a huge celebrity! Brother-in-law was shocked and quickly searched on his smartphone and showed the results to his mother. The search results likely displayed his impressive career, graduating at the top of his class from a culinary school in Paris and then landing a top position at a prestigious hotel in America. Why is someone like him here? My mother, maintaining her calm demeanor, gave a shy smile. Actually, I had a phase where I was really into curry. My father, knowing this, arranged for this expert chef to come and help us. It's a wonderful thing. Your father arranged for the chef. I can't believe such a dreamlike story. Yeah, it's impossible. What kind of father does she have? She probably just wanted to impress us today and spent all her savings to get him here. With all due respect, I am not someone who can be bought easily. The chef's stern gaze made brother-in-law flinch. No, that's not what I meant. Then why is such an impressive person suddenly appearing from a regular salaried employee's house kitchen? Mother-in-law was still incredulous and was fuming. I smiled sweetly at her. Oh, I suppose you didn't know. My mother's family is, to put it simply, a prominent conglomerate, so it's not surprising that such things happen. What? With newfound astonishment, both mother-in-law and brother-in-law's eyes lit up, now clearly showing dollar signs. Why didn't you mention this sooner? Nancy, you're being so reserved. An entire chef arranged by the family is amazing. How much did it cost to have him come here? As the two grew increasingly eager, the chef himself looked visibly uncomfortable. My mother maintained her calm demeanor. I'm sorry. I don't actually know the amount. You might be able to find out if you ask my family. The gentleness in my mother's tone seemed to make sense to mother-in-law and brother-in-law once they learned about her background, and they nodded in understanding. Their earlier arrogance replaced with more subdued reactions. Wow, the taste of a top hotel chef is incredible. It's deep and the flavor hits you gradually. Yes, exactly. I'm almost in tears from how the flavor is now enveloping my mouth and throat. A refined curry, just perfect for us. Wait, didn't you say it was bad? I believe you even suggested a taste test at a hospital. When I casually brought it up, mother-in-law shot me a glare that seemed almost tangible. Oh, Nancy. Surely you misunderstood? Someone with a refined palate like ours would never say that a top-tier curry is bad. 
Really? Just the other day, you called the curry I made dog food and dumped it all down the sink? Mother-in-law and brother-in-law looked momentarily uncomfortable, but they soon burst into laughter. Come on, Nancy, you're so full of yourself. There's no comparison between the curry you made and that of a renowned chef. It was night and day. Absolutely. Yours felt like something a novice made desperately, and it was inedible. It seemed that no matter how impressive my mother's family was, their attitude towards me remained unchanged. I stared incredulously at the two of them and then looked back at the chef. Well, there you have it. I still have a lot to learn. That's strange. I thought Nancy had surpassed my own skills in curry making. What? As the chef gave them a stern look, both mother-in-law and brother-in-law froze, looking dumbfounded. Surpassed your skills? What do you mean? Nancy trained with me for a while when she was single so that she could make curry whenever her mother wanted it. She worked hard to perfect her curry-making skills. Training? Nancy? The person most shocked was the self-proclaimed cooking enthusiast, mother-in-law. She probably never imagined someone would go to such lengths just to cook for their family. Yes. Indeed. She put in tremendous effort to master the art of spice curry. I believe she's now skilled enough to open her own restaurant. Mother-in-law and brother-in-law were left speechless, stunned by this revelation. I sighed with a sad expression, preparing to deliver a follow-up blow. But I guess I'm still not good enough. They thought my curry was so bad that they threw out not just the servings on the plates, but the entire pot of curry as well. Wait, Nancy! She tried to stop me, but it was too late. The chef's expression grew even sterner. Throughout? The entire pot of curry? Well, Nancy's curry. Oh! She must have skimped on the ingredients. Exactly! Even if the recipe was the same as today's, it tasted cheap and poor. It wasn't up to our standards at all. They struggled to justify themselves in front of the renowned hotel chef. I decided to deliver the final blow, feigning surprise. Really? I made sure to order the exact same high-quality ingredients that the chef's hotel uses. They were quite hard to come by, yet they threw it all out after just one bite. You ordered the same top-quality ingredients? That's impossible! I always do that. My husband loves it, so I want to make it special for him. Why would you waste so much money on curry? What do you think my son's salary is for? My mother, noticing her complaints, widened her eyes in surprise. Nancy, aren't you using your own money for the ingredients? Isn't the allowance from Grandpa enough? It is. More than enough, actually. I can hardly spend it all every month. Managing the gift tax is quite a task. Hearing about my allowance, both my mother-in-law and brother-in-law were shocked. You get that much? Why? You're just a grandchild. The chef, clearly exasperated, explained. Since Nancy is the only direct grandchild from her mother's side, it's only natural for her to be doted on. What? The only direct grandchild of a wealthy family? That means... All the wealth and reputation will eventually go to Nancy? Why didn't you tell us something so important, Nancy? You're a big deal! I felt a shiver of fear seeing their eyes light up with renewed greed. Nancy, thank you for inviting us to your home today and treating us to such delicious curry. Suddenly, she approached me with a sycophantic smile. 
what are you doing all of a sudden? That curry from the other day was also amazing. I was so overwhelmed by its taste that I accidentally overturned the plates and pot. Please forgive us. Yeah, it was so moving that we overturned everything. We'd love to come again. In fact, how about we come every Friday for curry? You know, to bond as family. Absolutely not. I firmly rejected their sudden attempt to cozy up to me. You overturned the plates and pot because you were moved by the curry? Don't lie about something so easily debunked. Nancy, calm down. We were really just surprised. Let's clear up the misunderstanding and get along. I refuse. I tolerated it because you're my husband's family, but I'm done with you prying into our meals every day. And looking down on my family while wasting food. I can never get along with people like you. Seeing me get angry, my mother-in-law and brother-in-law, flustered, decided to turn to my mother for support. Nancy may be upset, but as relatives, we should get along, right? She clung to my mother's shoulder, begging. Yes, exactly. My mother and I hold positions as future CEO and current CEO's wife. We would have more in common with you than with ordinary people. Desperately trying to flatter us, they both looked at my mother expectantly. Unperturbed, she tilted her head thoughtfully. Hmm. But from what I've seen, you've both been too harsh on my daughter. And I heard some unkind words about my beloved Curry. I'm afraid I can't be friends with you. That's a shame. She smiled gently, and seeing this, my mother-in-law and brother-in-law turned pale with shock. So, I'm going to tell my husband everything and keep my distance from you too. Please leave our house immediately. Wait! We still need to talk! I have nothing more to say to you, especially after you insulted the chef's curry. We told you it was a misunderstanding! As they continued to insist, I pulled out my phone from my pocket. I've recorded everything that happened just now. I pressed the play button, and their voices, loudly complaining about the terrible curry, filled the room. No, it's not what it sounds like. It's a misunderstanding, really. In the end, the two of them faces turning red with embarrassment and blue with shame in front of the chef, quickly fled from my parents' house. With the kitchen finally quiet, my mother and I enjoyed the chef's homemade curry at a leisurely pace. As for what happened to my mother-in-law and brother-in-law afterward, an unfortunate reality awaited them. My mother-in-law had blogged about the curry I made, describing it as a disgustingly terrible curry made by a commoner daughter-in-law. To make matters worse for her, the blog post started to gain attention around the same time my true background was revealed, and it quickly went viral. She had described the chickpeas in the curry as unidentifiable beige lumps and boasted about throwing it all away because it was so bad. The backlash from food enthusiasts was severe. How can you call yourself a food blogger if you don't even recognize chickpeas? Wasting food is unforgivable. With such comments flooding in, the outrage showed no signs of stopping. Soon, my mother-in-law had to shut down her cherished blog, which she had spent years building. Moreover, the blog's backlash reached my father-in-law, revealing the whole incident. Combined with my testimony through my husband, my father-in-law was furious with my mother-in-law. She had a history of treating his company's employees poorly, using her status as the CEO's wife to belittle them. This time, my father-in-law finally decided to divorce her. As for my brother-in-law, even before this incident, he had been shirking his responsibilities and dumping work on his subordinates. My father-in-law had already seen through him, 
realizing he wasn't fit to be the successor. Following the divorce from my mother-in-law, my brother-in-law was also removed from his position as the next CEO. Moreover, his behavior towards his subordinates and harassment of female employees by flaunting his status as the next CEO led to his termination from the company. Now, he's ironically having to job hunt to become the very salaried employee he once looked down upon. His attitude, however, is hindering his efforts. My mother-in-law, trying to escape from her unemployed son who is after the assets she received from the divorce settlement, has had to move repeatedly. I doubt her inherited wealth will last long at this rate. Both of them seem to be facing a lonely future. This is what happens to people who waste food. With no successor left, my father-in-law's company is now set to be taken over by my husband, the second son. Currently, he's working alongside the employees to learn the ropes. As expected, my husband has been receiving excellent evaluations from everyone. Being able to watch the future competent CEO up close is an immense joy. As for me, when I served curry to my friends, it was so well received that they encouraged me to open a cafe. Conveniently, there was a stylish vacant shop near our house, so I decided to rent it and start with lunch service three days a week. I began with the hope of making people happy with my perfected curry. To my delight, the curry's reputation spread, and there would be lines outside the shop on lunch service days. If things continue to go well, hiring employees and opening six days a week might not be just a dream. It's incredible that the curry I worked so hard on to please my mother and husband has turned into this success. Every day is filled with joy and surprises. I hope to bring happiness to even more people with the curry I perfected during my training, for the sake of my supportive husband and mother. How did you like today's story? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.